himself, Nick Chef. Nick, nice to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. A movie's been made. Uh, Car Steve Carell is in the movie, uh, and and your story is portrayed on the big screen. Uh, it was written uh, beautifully by uh, a great screenwriter. But this is your life. This is your real life. You live through this. I see you here sitting smiling. You, you seem healthy. You seem strong. <laughs> yeah, and it's a miracle. Any, anyone who goes through that movie and that emotional roller coaster that is the life of your father and your family and you uh, has to say to themselves, well, at least it has a good ending so far. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a really important message, and it's one that we want to sort of spread with our, our new book, Hi, too, is um, just the fact that there is a lot of hope for people who struggle with substance abuse. And, um, you know, it's, it's not just for me. I mean, I see it with the thousands of guys and girls that I, women that I work with, and it's... Uh, it's really cool. I mean, you see how people's lives get so much better and bigger uh, internally too. You know, when they get sober. Yeah. Let's start. Let's start with this. I have five kids. I've been through everything you could possibly imagine with my children. You never expect it's going to hit your family because you have the perfect family. Everything is good. You have a good job. You live in the suburbs. Everything is perfect. Yet somehow, some way, kids find a way to get in trouble. How did it happen for you? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. You know, addiction is an equal opportunity destroyer, right? It doesn't matter what socioeconomic background, what cultural background you come from, it can affect anyone. And, you know, it's a disease, it's a brain disease, and um, I, I have it. Um, you know, there's uh, sometimes, or there can be a genetic component. Um, my grandfather, you know, drank himself to death, actually. You know, we have alcoholism going back generations on the outside of my family. So for me, you know, the first time that I smoked pot when I was 11 years old, it really gave me this feeling of, of relief. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'd felt really anxious and, and um, sort of uncomfortable in my own skin. And, and the feeling that the drug gave me was like the feeling I'd been looking for. And so, you know, I just kept doing it. And then um, because I didn't learn any coping skills because I was, you know, that was when my brain was developing sure. and I was supposed to be uh, learning how to deal with life. You know, I, I just, I kept reaching out to the drugs and, and um, you know, eventually got into harder and harder stuff. But, you know, the thing is, I think is important to note here is that all kids at 11, 10, 11, 12 go through this. Your body's changing, your mind is changing, and so you do feel inadequate. There's a lot of this feeling and ina inadequacy. And on occasion, you will find somebody who has a friend who has a friend who says, hey, if you try this, all that stuff goes away. Yes, I and mean, that is basically how it happened to me. And I just unfortunately happened to be a person who's... Um, brain uh, process the drugs in a way that was, you know, unique to us who have this disease. But, um, you know, they do say that the younger someone uses drugs or alcohol, the more likely they are to develop a dependency. So mm -hmm. really one of um, our goal, our goals as parents and, and um, mentors is to just try to help kids to sustain from using as long as possible, because that really can be helpful. And then also just to help um, young people develop other sort of coping skills to deal with stress because that really is the main reason that right. young people uh, reach out to drugs yeah, they're not and alcohol. cute enough, they're not strong enough, they're not athletic enough, they're not smart enough. All the things, all the doubt, self-doubt, right? Yeah, and I and think And then it progresses on. Yeah, and it's worse than it's ever been. You know, I think young people really are facing a very difficult path with, you know, social media and... Oh, um, sure the sort of state of the world which they're aware of and so you know getting helping them to learn other skills and d ways of dealing with that stress early is so important for you how powerful is that movie uh, it, it was very authentic I mean it was hard to watch um, yeah. I also came away from it you know now I've been sober for nine years um, I you know work in film and television now actually and so it's it's been a long time since we went through that as a family so seeing the movie it just made me so grateful for the life that I have now and for my relationship with my dad and and um, my whole family my little brother and sister it's pretty amazing to see how um, you know we've been able to come back from that and and like I said I'm you know we're, I'm not unique like there's thousands or millions of us across the country who yeah. have been able to repair those relationships well, and build lives for ourselves. Well Nick thank you for writing the book. 
thank you for making the movie and thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, thank There's you. There's a lot of us here in the world that, that appreciate your courage for what you're doing and getting that story out, getting that message out. Continue success to you and I uh, hope that nine months turns into 90 years. Yeah, yeah. Nine years, nine years. Nine years. Got nine months, that would be terrible. terrible. <laughs> yeah. no, nine you. years is good. Nine years is better nine than nine months. Yeah. I misspoke. Uh, Nick, thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure meeting you. and can, can